Good morning. Good morning. How is everyone this morning? Doing okay? Good morning, Ray. <laughs> Move this out of the way for a moment. All right. It rained last night, which I'm so grateful for. But it actually is really nice when their feet is wet. They like it a lot. It turns into something like a mash, and then some people do fermented feed but they really enjoy it so I just come out and just just dump it so that they can eat it because it's stuck inside of the feeders all right then we just we'll just replenish it with the pellets and this is a non-gmo layer pellets pecking at her head. I have a solution for that. I'm going to separate her. She's a weak one. And that hen right there, she's weak. They pick on her as well. So these two girls are going to be sisters living together real soon. So I am going to interplant the watermelon radish in between the broccoli here. And I'm going to use the honest seeds. So we'll just dig a small little trench, about a fourth of an inch deep, right in the middle there. And just enough for the watermelon radish to come up. I've been in here just weeding out the bed a bit before I get started and leaving a few of my self-sown flowers in here. So we'll just put about two rows right here, here and here, maybe about a foot apart from each other. and. What is going to happen, of course, these broccoli plants are going to grow up really tall and strong. But the watermelon radish will get some shade from the parching heats that we will get here in Georgia. And it will help to just keep them just a little bit cooler um, as they grow. So two rows going straight down the middle of this bed here. Let's do it. a closer look at what the watermelon radish looks like. All right, so lightly, ooh, lightly just cover it over with the soil.
Good morning, friends. Welcome home. I hope you're blessed and doing well because I'm doing great. Welcome back to the garden. Welcome to the Potage. I am so happy to have you all here with me today. Oh my gosh, it's a busy morning. I have been doing a lot of weeding in the garden, just trying to lay out and define my garden paths because it will drive me absolutely nuts if I don't get these paths laid today. I have some seeds to sow and a lot has been growing on in the garden. We have an abundance of growth and I'm really happy about that, but I feel like I'm, I feel a little behind schedule, but it's okay, it's okay, because I still have time. This is the optimal time to get off my warm season crops growing and I'm gonna do just that. I had a really bad storm to come in about a month ago and completely destroyed my seed ball bed and I'm like so bummed out about that because it tore this whole area up and um, so I had to redig the bed and place the um, rows back in and that is where I'll have to re-sew my cucumbers. I was really looking forward to showing you all what that looked like once they germinated but I may just do some more and um, we could take a look at how they grow as they grow along. So we've been experiencing some seed shortages, food shortages, inflations happening, all different types of things that have really jolted us gardeners and some that are just new at gardening and growing to really get growing and grow your own food. And I hope to encourage you to do that today. So if you've been experiencing some seed shortages and you haven't been able to find the seeds that you're looking for, I have a really good recommendation for you today. Our good friends at Honest Seeds would like to offer up some seed discounts to you guys because they understand and they value the home gardener and also value growing your own food. So two weeks ago, we came out to the garden and we interplanted or intersowed these watermelon radishes in here from Honest Seeds. And you know what? They are doing really really well as you can see they're growing nicely here and really really beautiful so the slugs are out it's definitely time for the slugs so I have to manage this bed for slug control and get out the weeds that don't belong so I do have some weeding to do in here today though as well and I do plan on spacing out my watermelon radish I don't want to thin them I would prefer to just space them out because I value every single seed. Look how gorgeous these seedlings are. Absolutely fantastic. So it's really easy to identify the seeds, the germinated watermelon radish from the grass seeds. It's not hard to identify them at all. So once they've germinated and they've got their true leaves, you can pick out the weeds from the seedlings very easily. We did plant some beets in here and they are doing absolutely fantastic. They germinated really well. And I wish I would have done, I wish I would have sold them when I said I was gonna sow them, because if I would have, this would be the size of them right now. Look at that. They're already growing and filling in. <laughs> that beet looks fantastic. It's also time to do some bug control um, in the garden, because the temperatures are starting to warm up and the um, moths are starting to lay their eggs underneath the brassicas here and the greens and they will definitely just really just kind of destroy the leaves and if you want to you know maintain really good photosynthesis with your plants you don't want them to destroy the leaves as much as possible and also um this is some slug control time it's more than likely the bigger holes that you see I can just, let me see if I can find one the bigger holes that you see if it's a larger space or you know kind of chewed out like that that is more than likely a slug 
All right, I'm gonna finish weeding out this bed in just a little bit, but let's go up to the container garden and let's sow some seeds. All right, so here I am back at my deck container garden. And you all remember this space. This is our 100 square foot designated area for our container gardening. And I'm just gonna pull my chair over here so we can get started. All right, so I have some flowers blooming here. I think I have the, um, the Asiatic Lily is blooming and it's so gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Just planted out some begonias and some coleus and yeah, everything is growing on the, in the container garden. So someone left a message um, and asked me, um, well commented, why have flowers? What's the point of that? And um, just to let you all know who may not be that familiar with gardening, um, flowers are quite essential to gardeners because they bring in the beneficial insects and the pollinators to your garden. So if you need plants that need pollinating, it is really, really um, wise to plant flowers that they'll be attracted to. It's like having a giant landing strip um, for an airplane. It, it directs you in to where you need to come in to, to pollinate your plants. So that if you have the plants and vegetables and fruit around that are blooming or in flower, that means that they would be attracted to those blooms as well. And it's so amazing that the blooms typically are yellow because they attract the beneficial insects to their flowers. Not only are flowers beautiful and they bring in the pollinators and the beneficial insects, a lot of flower varieties are also edible. So in my container garden, I did plant nasturtium, which is an edible flower. Um, you can plant zinnias, you can plant sages, um, different thymes, and um, oh gosh, there's, there's so many edible flowers. Your violas, your pansies, um, things like that. A lot of times, a lot of people are not really um aware that their flowers are edible but just do a little research maybe and you may find that you have more edible flowers sitting right around you that you never knew were edible or even medicinal all right so i have a, a mixture of amendments in here i have some potty mix i have this pro mix that i already had i have some sand i already had that and i have some vermiculite and perlite and i'm just going to mix this up um and combine it all and wet it down. I'm just gonna mix everything together. I'm making sure I'm removing all the larger sticks out of here that may that I may see. And I believe it's supposed to be pressable. And you're supposed to be able to hold it together and it shouldn't fall apart. So when squeezed like that, I think it's doing pretty good. So I just might add just a little bit more potty mix in here just to dry up a little bit more of that moisture and we're good to go. I'm gonna use this soil blocker here and I have all of the details to this soil blocker in the description box below. So it comes like this and let's take it out and let's give it a try. So as far as I know, you just Stick it in there and give it a nice wiggle jiggle. And perhaps it's supposed to stay in there like that. Let's see. Give it another little wiggle jiggle. Okay. Wanna make sure it's nice and packed in there. Right? All right. So that's what it's looking like. And then I have my little tray here. I'm gonna place it right here. I'm gonna give it a squeeze. Let's see what happens. <gasps> what do y'all think? Did I do good? Cool. So this is my first attempt at soil blocking and I think it's absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna squeeze out the excess water and I'm placing it down. And there we go. Fantastic. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about that. Let's 
do another tray. This is fun. Okay, I decided to do that one over that was a little off a little bit. All right, that looks so much better. And as I get the hang of it, they're looking better and better. And I'm gonna sow a few seeds per sale. These are really, really tiny, so they won't need to be covered up really deep. They're so tiny. And we're gonna use the perlite to cover them. So I'll just sew a few per cell. All right, and I'm gonna label it by placing a label right here on my tray. Right. And I'm gonna label my tray. All right, so let's get the uh, perlite and cover it over. I'm gonna cover the amaranth very lightly, very, very lightly, barely covering that one because it's such a tiny seed. And then I'll just cover the rest of them as normal. There we go. Now, I'm not gonna use a watering can because I don't want to destroy my soil blocks, but what I am going to do is I am going to miss these tray, these um, blocks here. And this will be a nice way to water them without destroying the blocks. I also know that you can bottom water these and you can just add water to the little tray and it the blocks will soak it up as well. So that is also another way that you can do it. But this mister is really gentle, so it doesn't do um, any damage at all. And that is it. I will leave a link for the soil blocker and for the seeds in the description box below for you. I hope you're able to find the seeds you're looking for and I hope you give soil blocking a try because it is absolutely fantastic and so simple. I can't wait to see these germinate. And let me know in the comment section if you've ever done soil blocking yourself. I would really love to know and I will see you all on the next video. Bye.